All right, so yesterday I was streaming and I had some people ask, hey man, why have you not talked about the Ruler Artoria buff, the Summer Tomoe buff, and the Ishtar buff? Especially because everybody knows I'm a huge fan of Ruler Artoria and Tomoe. And I was like, well, I was just waiting to make sure that these were the only buffs we were getting. And frankly, I have been very focused on both JP accounts, trying to keep them both up to date on the current event. So I did kind of whiff out on it a little bit. And I was like, oh, let me just talk about the advanced quest. That's really easy. I've already beaten these. I could just show the gameplays that I, you know, used to beat that. So a little bit behind on this by a couple of days, but I will go ahead and check these out. Now, again, as per usual, I like to look at these with you guys. So you guys can get a, I guess, a raw reaction to something. You can tell that if it's going to be like really good or if it's like, oh, that might doesn't really strike me as all that great. But uh, this one being a buff to her skill, just please give her more damage. Like I am really sad using Artoria and then like she kind of hits like a wet paper towel. That's good. So the attack's not new, is it? Cause she already gave everybody the attack. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the attack's not new. It's just the buster buff. That's actually good for her NP cause now she has a buster mana burst. And this is stackable. If you're using her in like Koya and Skaya setups, this is functionally going to turn into like what? You know, the 80% attack was already a thing, but now it's gonna turn into functionally 80% buster because you'll have the 30% from the first time using the skill. And then when you loop it, you'll get an additional 30 and then you have the 20% when you fire the NP. Let me, um, in the background, just pull up the damage chart because I didn't know what I was going to expect with these going forward because Ruler Artoria realistically, I think just needs damage. She can already crit really nice with this skill. Like her crits are, are good. If you've seen me use her on stream, she can hit pretty good. 50% crit damage buff is nice, especially when you give it to the entire party. I mean, it does turn the meme into like DPS Merlin to somewhat of a real possibility, right? Especially with his new skill buff. So it kind of makes that a little bit more funny. I was expecting her to get an NP buff, honestly, but then, you know, obviously I saw over there that it was a skill buff. Uh, I was wanting this because this at least guarantees that she would have gotten more damage and then maybe they would attack something else on there. But I think this is probably better with it being stackable. Obviously, that relies on you having Koya and Skaya, right? If you don't have Koya, that is the drop rate. <laughs> that is not. <laughs> Whoops. I'm sorry, dude. I, I swear I do this. Uh, I do this every single day. Um, but this is probably better with it being stackable with Koyan Sky, although it is relying on you having that. Did they not? Is that updated? There's no way that's the updated damage. That seems that still seems very, very low. If that's not updated, then I guess you would get like maybe like one or two K higher than that. But then again, they might have updated that. And that this also doesn't take into account um the double stacking on the third skill and her having the royal bunny fall thing over there as well so it's probably better than it looks but i do remember her being quite low on here so that actually might be the updated numbers but hey still better than nothing although man i really would have liked to see like what, what did they change about this this increases party's attack like oh it's the party's attack sorry duh i'm i'm being stupid Ooh, wait this is okay so this is kind of interesting, actually, because now that she's giving the entire party 40% attack, I could see this kind of being useful in, say, some setups where you want, say, like an Oberon or a Koyan Sky to clear a wave. Giving them 40% attack can be pretty big, especially considering that, you know, they give themselves like the NP damage. Like Koyan Sky has it as a, a passive, Oberon has it as his first skill. That can be very nice uh, if you're needing to use a couple of different servants to get through waves. It can be very useful in those. I could see this having some use in that. You know, maybe you use her to take out one of the lesser waves and you need a stronger DPS to take out like the 1 million HP enemy. I can see this being good. I might be coping a little bit on it just because I really like Lan- uh, Well, I, I do like Lancer Artoria, but also this is Ruler Artoria. Um, I might be coping a little bit, but I could see some use for it. I'm excited to get my grubby little bits on this in two years because I don't have this servant on JP, but I guess she's on rate up right now, so maybe we'll see. Uh, Tomoe, NP buff. I'm just expecting... I don't even know what I'm expecting. Maybe they... No, the stun's on the third skill. 
They gave her an arts buff. Uh, didn't she already have those? I'm sorry. Uh, she did, but now they're three turns. Okay. Yeah, that's why I was like, I was a little confused. I was like, I thought she already had these buffs. Okay, so now they're three turns. So she'll stack them. That, that'll actually be a bit more impactful. Because if you've ever used somebody like, say, Jason or Muramasa, those guys that stack arts buffs on their NP, Muramasa obviously stacks NP damage as well. But these guys that stack that arts buff is relatively good for increasing their NP gain as they go on in the fight. It also does give them more damage over time. So even if you do look at something over here and you're like, oh, Saber Tomoe is like super low on here, right? Like you like look right here and you're like, ah, well, that's that's kind of low. That's not super great for her numbers. But you got to remember that that's going to improve over waves. It's not showing her true three turn performance. Again, still not the best, right? But they did increase her base damage by increasing, you know, just the NP as well. Like every time you get an NP upgrade, you also get base damage increase. So that's good in and of itself. This is like nice. These are like nice little buffs for them. I guess the Buster is nice because she also, I believe it's a 100% crit damage buff. Yeah, it's 100% crit damage. So yeah, I mean, that'll help her crits. That'll help her Buster crits out. So that's not bad. Again, these are like not the craziest buffs for them, but they're nice. You know, they're, they're not the most insane thing, but they're like definitely improvements for them. Uh, I think this one is more interesting for potentially like uh, multi-core setups where like you're using multiple DPSs. I'll be interested to see what's up with that. Uh, especially because with Merlin's relatively new buff where he's giving the entire party crit damage, she's giving everybody crit damage, now they're giving everybody attack, you know, that could get kind of funny and get a little bit ridiculous. Uh, Ishtar, I'm just expecting her to get something that makes her loop a bit easier. Uh, I would really like her to get something that loops a bit easier because Okay, I know that I'm like the Ishtar hater. It's because I'm a Gil fan, right? You know, if, if you like Gilgamesh, you can't like Ishtar. It's just kind of, it just goes hand in hand. But um, she was one of the servants I was using during the quick meta to kind of get by in loop. Like if I didn't want to use Lancelot, because for whatever reason, sometimes I get tired of using the same servant. I'd be like, oh, let me break out uh, Ishtar. Let me use her instead. Because she could still get by with one Scott. He was a little bit janky, but you know, I still have fond memories of using her. So just anything that would help her out a little bit. Buff to the third skill, the NP gain is now three turns, 50%, and she has a 30% batter. I mean, dust our hands off. I mean, that's that's pretty easy. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's, a, that's about on par for what I would have expected, but this is really strong because you can just use her with, say, something like a, uh, a K-scope, or because it's a 30% of imaginary element, you could start her off with that, boom, fire this immediately, then just dump your Scotty skills into her and she'll loop at least 50% back. I mean, I can guarantee you that right now. 50% NP gain buff. I mean, she was already doing that relatively well um, with her first skill. If you're not aware, uh, her first skill is quite strong, giving the entire party the buster quick and notably also NP gain. So now she's rocking 70% plus a 20% quick buff. Yeah, the quick buff is a little bit low still, but I guess you just got to keep in mind that Ruler Scotty is not like overtuned for like quick farming, but you know, they definitely did give her that additional 15% quick to help out servants like Ryder Ishtar over here. She would be like one of those servants that um, benefits a lot more from Ruler Scotty. She's not one of like the top tier loopers that got just even more ridiculous. It's somebody that was maybe more on the fringes and they are now kind of brought in and they can more comfortably do things. Um, but this is ridiculous. This is pretty good for her. Uh, didn't have a demerit. Yeah, it had the stun demerit. I'm glad they're taking these off, by the way, because I think they did that for Summer Tamamo. Uh, they gave, like, Kiara has a similar buff for her third skill, and instead they made it like an HP demerit. But, you know, that one was never really a demerit because she could heal it all back. So I like that they're going back for these, like, Summer Goddesses, and they're, like, fixing up these buffs because we're, we're way past the time of needing these little demerits in our servants kits i mean like come on like especially for free to play units and especially now that she's available uh due to the evocation festival this is going to be a very good boon for a lot of people if you don't have a good quick looper in your account i would look forward to ishtar because she was already like on the fringes you got ruler scotty now she's like pretty good she's solid they give her this buff she's completely sold like you, you just use her whenever you want like she's totally good she's cooking uh i've always speaking on the fixing of servant skills when I'm going to remove this, man, I understand she's a gamer and you wanted to get like sleepy and tired because she was gaming all night. But I don't know, like it's a lore buff. At least it's not like 
the Okita thing where it would like stun her immediately. So follow up crits, you know, for like Okita summer were like really awkward to do. At least it's not like that. It's after three turns, but still, come on, man. Like, let's, let's just knock that off. You know, we knock that off on the next buff and then I don't know, just chuck her something good. I don't really care. Make Tomoe, <laughs> just make her great, make her broken. Uh, I don't really care what else you check on there, but yeah, I think all of these are relatively solid these two i don't think will be the most impactful they're just kind of like hey do you like using ruler artoria do you like using tomoe saber they're now a little bit better but this one i think is really good because she's free everybody has access to the servant so not only is she getting a lot better but everybody will have access to this so this is definitely the most impactful one that i saw today but with that being said let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and uh, leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel for more fgo content and i'll catch you guys in the next one which will be tomorrow i guess but yeah i'll catch you guys later peace late guys